former BYU football great, NFL second-round draft pick, and Zach Wilson's quarterback's coach in a lot of ways, John Beck. John, great to have you on. How are you? I'm doing good, fellas. When you look at what Zach Wilson is about to go through in a couple of days in the NFL draft, what type of emotions do you feel knowing that you had a similar experience? Well, it's a tremendous story for Zach, a tremendous accomplishment. Um, to be able to be, you know, potentially the second pick of the draft is a huge, huge thing. Uh, I was just talking to Zach the other day, and I just said, this is amazing, man. There's only in the last, you know, 20 years, 40 people that can say that they were top two draft picks. So, you know, it's just really, it's great for him to, to get that opportunity because of all the hard work that he's put in, you know, everybody's story is different. Zach's story is one of chasing this dream since childhood and sacrificing a lot of things for a lot of years to get there. One of my favorite quotes, and I, I probably said it before on the show, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. And the entire country is saying, where did Zach Wilson come from? But the reality is in the dark behind the stage curtains, you know, in behind closed doors, he's been working for a long, long time for this. So I'm so proud of him. What's this experience been like for you, not just with Zach, but with uh, Justin Fields and Kyle Trask, and now apparently the Niners asked Trey Lance to go to you as well? Like, what, what is this like becoming one of uh, the, the main QB gurus out there? I mean, it's a cool experience. I love the quarterback position. I love, I love to help these young men. I think the one with Zach is really uh, – I don't even know how to explain it sometimes. It's crazy because – Okay, so where Zach is at, it's almost the exact same gap between me and Ty Detmer. And I looked up to Ty so much, <laughs> and I loved my conversations I got to have with Ty. And it's weird for me now to be like, wait, I'm like the gap distance that Ty was to me. I am for Zach. It's crazy. Um, and, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's weird when I hear Zach sometimes say the things he's thinking or what he's doing or all, all these different things. It's like this time warp where I'm like, man, sometimes it feels like I'm talking to like a younger version of my own like thoughts or my own like all these things. So it's really cool. And what I try to be for, for Zach and for all these guys is somebody that just had an experience along the same path. Mine was not the same as Zach's because I wasn't going to be the number two pick of the draft, right? Uh, but I do know what it feels like to have a general manager, a head coach, an owner right after your draft to tell you, you are our plan for the future. And I also know the expectations, the pressures, and I know how quickly things can turn. So I just try to be that sounding voice for all those guys. You know, it's cool to be around Justin. Like, he's an unbelievable player. He came from an unbelievable school. I love the opportunities I have to go to these universities and be a part of their pro day and to kind of, like, soak in a little bit of the history of the school as well as help them. Same with Kyle Trask in Florida. I mean, it's, it's a really cool experience. But for me, it means a lot to pass on just some things I've gained, just some knowledge that I have and see those guys welcome it and say thank you because I know this will help me. John Beck with us on BYU Sports Nation. You brought up your specific scenario with uh, the Miami Dolphins and hearing from a general manager and a head coach and what you went through. How was the situation that you had in Miami when you were drafted both similar and different than what Zach Wilson is walking into, we think, in New York with the Jets? Well, I think the similarity is what I described. They're going to pick him to be their future. They – they want him as their quarterback. And the second that he gets picked, he's going to get you know flown up to their facility and they're going to put him in front of the media and they're basically going to present him as this is our future quarterback. Uh, so I know exactly what that feels like. The thing that will be different, and I've tried to tell Zach this because sometimes he's like, man, I saw like, I know your story and like that sucks. And I don't want to be a part of that. Like, I, I don't want the same thing. And I always say, don't worry about it. Like your situation's different than what mine was. Um, the more I've learned about my situation, I, I was walking into a place that was like a sinking ship already. That is not, uh, that is not, oh, did you guys just lose me? Sorry. We're, we're back. We still got we're you. We're back. It, well, it was okay. kind of like the Dolphins. Sorry. You walked in, it went blank real fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, I saw some spam call, and I'm like, good crap. Of all the times for some spam call, it's got to be right now. But, uh, no, the thing I tell him, I'm like, look, it's going to be totally different for you. Like, they're bringing in this young group of people. They're bringing in a coach. The general manager is coming from a philosophy of like consistency. He comes from the Baltimore Ravens. I knew him when he was there. I know the offensive coordinator really, really well. Like, I think that he's walking into a situation where it's going to be a really, really strong support group that is going to do everything they possibly can. I don't see this as being something where six months down the road, every single person that picked him is gone from the building. You know, the experience I had 
the more that I've lived my life, I've seen just how rare and unfortunate that was. And that's life. I don't think that Zach's is going to be even close to that because also the people in that room, I've had talks with them and they know this is what we have to do for him. This is how we have to help build him. So I see it playing out completely different for Zach. Hey, that's great because uh, somehow Dennis Pitta was the co-host yesterday with me. We got through that. But, um, John, I don't know why we didn't have you before him, but you're kind of busy now, I guess. Busy. But, I, you know, yeah. I I appreciate the effort that was made to try to get me on. Unfortunately, this is a really busy time of year for me. Why? What's going on? I'm just kidding. Um, Dennis talked yeah. about with the Jets. He was like, I don't know, man. And he had some questions, right? But what you said has, you know, sort of comforted uh, the minds of perhaps those who are nervous with the Jets. Uh, yeah, is it the Dolphins? Is it, and I talked about it earlier in the show, is this Jim Fredette to the Kings where it wasn't a great fit and they were really going to build around him? But So you feel like, okay, there's a real shot for him to succeed here despite the fact that previously the Jets haven't developed quarterbacks at a high level. Look, I know that there are sometimes places that are called quarterback graveyards. Um, when I got to the league, it was places like Oakland, Cleveland, Detroit, which kind of funny because those were all the teams that were potentially drafting quarterbacks that year. Uh, you know, Miami has been a place, same thing. They're trying to find their quarterback. So, you know, yes, all those concerns are valid. Uh, and I, I would be lying if I told you guys I didn't have some of those concerns as well. And, you know, I've had Zach where he's, he, he's voiced those concerns. Really, what you got to do is you just got to say, those things are out of my control. What an awesome opportunity and challenge it would be to turn that place around. There's an excitement there. For whatever reason, throughout my career, I've been, I've seen both ends of the spectrum. I've seen like really crappy places and I've seen really, really good places. And there's this cool challenge that can be there of trying to take a place that has not had success and do everything you can to try to get it successful. And just because you have the motivation doesn't mean it's going to happen. Just because you're trying to do all the right things or bringing the right people into the building, it does not guarantee success. But really, the enjoyment comes in that challenge. And I think that they are going to draft a guy that's going to be great for that because Zach Wilson loves challenges. And I think Robert Sala, the head coach, he's that type of guy as well. And I know some of the guys that played on his defense, that's the thing they love most about him. It's that challenge aspect. So I think they're doing the right things. It doesn't guarantee that that black cloud that's hovering around the Jets is going to leave. Um, I've been a part of organizations where you feel that and you're doing everything you possibly can. And at the end of the day, the owner decides, you know what, that black cloud is still here. We're firing everybody. And those are unfortunate events. But, you know, at this point in time, I've tried to really just talk to Zach and his family and everybody and just say, look, where your feet are at right now, how exciting of an opportunity this is. You're having the second team in the draft potentially be taking you and they want you to be the guy to join them in that turnaround. And it is a storied franchise. I know that there's all these things that haven't gone well for them. But there is a lot of history there. And if you can turn that place around, it will be a great place to win football games. And that's what I'm hoping for. And that's what, you know, I, I, I know Zach's hoping for it. And this Cougar fan base is hoping for the same, the same thing. It's going to be tough, but it could be very, very rewarding. And this is another thing I'm going to say. Hypothetically, let's just say it's a really tough two to three years. Zach will be a better quarterback because of it. I can promise you that. Uh, when you're battle tested, it makes you a better quarterback. John Beck with us on BYU Sports Nation. What's going to be the hardest part of the learning curve for Zach Wilson transitioning from college football to the NFL? I would probably say the toughest thing, it's not going to be playbook. Zach will eat that up. It's not going to be speed of the game. I think he'll adapt to that. Will it be something in the beginning? Yes, but he'll adapt to it. I think what the biggest challenge is going to be is what he's accustomed to. He's won a lot of games over the last year. And a lot of those games were, you could say, blowout games. The NFL, you are not going to have blowout games. The NFL, it's going to feel more like what that Tennessee game from two years ago, what that USC overtime, uh, overtime game was. Uh, it, it's going to feel more like that each and every week. Um, so you just don't get those games where you're riding like a four-game win streak and you're beating everybody by 30 points. That's going to be a little bit of the adjustment where he's going to play a really good game and it's still going to be nip and tuck there at the end of the game. He may have completed 68 to 70% of his passes, which in the NFL for a rookie is an awesome job. He may have a touchdown or two where it may have been his best game up to that point in his career as a rookie. But all of a sudden, it may be two minutes left in the fourth quarter and his team's down by four points. And it may be that feeling like, I feel like I'm playing a good game. And in the past, when I have played a really good game, my team has walked away with the victory. That's one of the differences in the NFL of just how every single week comes down really to 
what happens in the fourth quarter and how can you play really efficient football at the end of the game to give your team a chance to win? You're coaching Zach on a, a bunch of things. A lot of them are on the field, a lot are off the field as well. Is there anything that can compare and prepare for him for the New York media? You know, we've had a lot of conversations about that. Um, and I've told him it's going to be exciting in the beginning because they're going to love him. And there's not a reason for them not to love him yet. No games have been played. And he's going to go through OTAs and the fan base is going to be coming to practices and they're going to come up with nicknames and they're going to be doing chants. And every, every single person is going to be wanting his autograph. It's going to be really exciting in the beginning. But history has shown us no matter what, that New York media is going to attack its quarterback when they don't feel like he's playing up to par. Or if the team is not doing what they should be doing, fingers get pointed. I don't know if you can walk in fully prepared. I think it's one of those things in life, like I'm going to reference like a mission. As many times as you can go to missionary prep classes, as many times as you can go on like splits with the missionaries, it can't totally prepare you for all of the things that you're going to face on your mission. That's why a mission is such a great experience because you're walking into it with what you got and then you have to experience things and you have to learn how to grow, adapt, change. You know, you're going to have experiences that drop you to your knees and you're going to plead for help or you're going to plead for guidance or you're going to really really hope for things and then in those things is where you grow i see this experience for zach and not being something where it's like hey we got to do everything you can to prepare you before you walk into it i look at it as let's talk about all the tools you're going to need so that then when you get there and you're experiencing it you know the right thing to do uh to help you grow in that and then he'll get more comfortable as it goes and i'm sure there's going to be those moments where he's walking down the street and there's going to be some, you know, magazine on some corner where it's going to be slamming him. You know, that'll be a tough thing to take. I, I know what those things feel like, uh, but it'll all be for his growth and development. And I think eventually it'll make him a really, really strong quarterback that in those moments, in those clutch moments where maybe he needs to come up with a victory, he finds a way to do it. And the lights just went out. Is that the cue for like, <laughs> the, like the interview's over? It's our cue. Yep. It's our cue to say that the interview's <laughs> over. That was awesome. Oh my John. Gosh. <laughs> Come on, lights. Where are the lights <laughs> in the meeting room? <laughs> hey, we, we I don't know what happened. Like, I'm sitting in this quarterback room, and all of a sudden, oh, there go the lights. All good, man. We appreciate the time. Uh, fantastic insight into what Zach and uh, his family and what you are all going through together as he pushes towards the draft. Uh, best of luck to you, man. We're so thrilled for all of your success. Can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. And congrats on 2000. I saw the stuff the other day. That's awesome. I remember when it first started for you guys. You guys have grown a lot along the way also. Congrats. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, man. John Beck on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.